You know, I absolutely love home labs because I can learn stuff in my home lab. I can actually go and build servers and actually play around with all these sorts of technologies. Well, the home lab is one of the best things that you can build and you can do it on the cheap. We're talking here less than $500 to actually build yourself a good home lab. We'll be covering the hardware that you need and some of the software and then where you can actually be putting all of this home lab and some costs around what you could be expecting to pay under 500 bucks to get yourself a very, very good home lab to get started. Before we do get into that. So we all think that we're pretty good at our job. We all think that we've got a whole bunch of skills in our resume, in our repertoire of skill sets. There's so many things, right? There's so many things around networking, server security, all of this sort of stuff. Wouldn't there be a great way where you could find out exactly how skilled you are. What if you're wanting to get that dream job and you think you don't have the skills? There is this great free test that I love asking you a whole bunch of questions. It won't take very long. And at the end of it, it'll actually tell you where your strong skill sets are and what jobs you would be fit for based on what you have done, based on your skill set. It'll also recommend certifications that you should be going for to be able to improve on some of the skills. It's absolutely brilliant. So if you like networking, system, security, if you're an IT manager, then this is gonna be perfect for you because you will actually be able to find out whether you're good, where your shortcomings are in your skills, what you need to do to get those skills upped. It's called Astrid. You can check it out down below in my show notes, but I absolutely love it. And it really will give you a good picture, a good indication of where you're at in your IT career. And also find out the top five jobs that you could land based on how you answered the questions in this competency check. Go and check it out, link down below, description of this video. First thing, is get yourself some computers. You can't build a home lab without some computers. So if you've already got some old computers, you're in a much better position than if you don't have anything because you can actually use old computers to start your home lab. Old laptops, old desktops. Now, if you don't have any spare computers, that's completely fine. You can actually get started by buying yourself a small little computer, something like this. Here we've got a Intel NUC. I mean, look at this thing. It's tiny. It's as big as my hand. And inside one of these is a small little motherboard. Inside one of these is a hard drive, some RAM, CPU, graphics, a whole heap of ports. Look at this. This has got four USB ports. It's got a HDMI video out. It's got another display port video out and some fans to make sure it keeps it cool. And of course, a network point. We can actually run this into a network and actually get it working on a home lab. You can pick one up for $200. Go to Amazon, go to your local PC store, and then you can actually install some server software onto here to get your home lab started. If you wanna spend a little bit more than 500, you can pick up a couple of them because having more than one is always a better thing. So if this isn't good enough for you, you can actually go and buy yourself something a little bit bigger. Go to your old computer store and buy yourself the cheapest parts possible. Go online onto eBay, see what people are selling secondhand. Get yourself maybe a little Raspberry Pi. These things are so cute, so brilliant, so easy to use. Installing some stuff onto there is great. But a couple things that I would recommend is firstly, that you've got enough RAM in it because the more RAM, the better. We're gonna be talking a little bit about some software that you can actually be running, some virtualization. The more RAM you've got, the more VMs, virtual machines you can build in your home lab. The second thing is making sure that whatever processor is inside the computer that you're getting supports virtualization technology. So you're looking for a VTX Intel or an AMD X for virtualization technology. So you can actually go and run hypervisor technology onto it and then build VMs. If it doesn't have that, you're not gonna be able to do that crucial part. And if we're talking about hardware, you need to have yourself a switch and a router of some sort, a modem. Now, if you're doing this at home, you probably already have this. Your internet connection coming into your home probably is on some sort of a device, a router of some sort. There's probably some ports on the back. You've already got all you need to get started in your home lab. You've got a device in there that probably has some firewall technology built in. And if it's got ports on the back, you've actually got a switch already. If you've got some spare ones, great. But having that as part of your home lab is good. And then you can run this thing or any other computer or your Raspberry Pi network point out of that, making sure you've got cables and then hook it up all together. So we started off with 200 bucks, assuming that you've got yourself a router, 
a switch, that sort of stuff already. The second thing you need to do is get some software. Some software. You can't build a home lab with just the computer. You need some software to actually get your home lab even started. So I recommend making your environment a virtualization environment. In the olden days, you had to go buy yourself maybe a whole pool of computers running Windows Server or Linux, and then you built one server for each individual purpose. No more. You now run onto your little computer, virtualization technology, essentially some hypervisor technology. It's a operating system pretty much that you can run onto that computer and actually convert it into a hypervisor. And then you can build these things called virtual machines directly onto that computer. Maybe building five computers directly on one piece of hardware. Some things you could look at here would be VirtualBox. You could look at Citrix Zen Server and my favorite VMware ESXi completely for free. Download it, you can license it completely for free. Install it onto your little computer and then you can build virtualization technologies. And then go and get yourself a whole bunch of ISOs. ISO files off the internet. You can download free trial, fully usable versions of Windows, of Windows Server. Download them for free. You can try them a full 180 days. Go and get yourself some different flavors of Linux. Try Ubuntu, try CentOS. If you wanna know a little bit about hacking and how to pen testers, penetration testers and people who do ethical hacking, what do they use? Well, they use Kali Linux, K-A-L-I Linux. Go and check those out, they're for free. You can download them, there are ISOs, and then once you've got some virtualization technology running on your hardware, then you can actually go and build a whole bunch of VMs running all these different flavors of Linux, different versions of Windows. So the more ISOs you've got, the better, and the better the environment you can actually build. Now, where's this thing gonna live? That's the next question. Do you wanna have a proper home lab and make it actually look pretty swanky? I mean, if you look at something like what I've got, I've got myself here a server rack, an actual cabinet where I store all my equipment inside of it. Rather than just having everything sitting in the corner of a room, I've decided to put it inside of this server rack. So you've got to have a think about where's it all going to live? Is it going to just live on a shelf? Is it going to live up in a cupboard? Is it going to live in a closet? Is it going to live in your bedroom? Is it going to live in the lounge room? Is it going to live in the garage, in the attic? Where's it going to live? I recommend putting it inside of a server rack. And that way in future, when you're wanting to expand things, you've already got the space in a server rack. The other thing about a server rack is they just look cool. You can pick up a server rack, something similar to what I've got for 200 bucks. Go and find a secondhand one. Brand new, they're gonna be a lot more. Forget about this, this $500, you're not gonna get it if it's brand new. Get it secondhand, a lot of companies Sometimes when they move offices or the company's no longer available, they're gonna be getting rid of these old server racks. And you can maybe pick one up for a hundred bucks, 200 bucks, you can find yourself something really, really good, absolutely brilliant. We're up to $400 so far. So what's the last thing you can do? Well, you've got a hundred dollars free, go and buy yourself some dinner. You can spend it however you want, but go and get yourself some old computers. Go and look again on eBay, get yourself more computers. The more computers in your home lab, the better. Because ultimately, if you've got yourself a little computer running ESXi, for example, the more computers you've got running ESXi, the more virtual machines, the better your home lab will be and the more functions your home lab will actually have. Why don't you let us know what you are gonna be building? Let us know what you're thinking about building in your home lab down below in the comments and also, I have videos on Udemy and on Skillshare that you could probably go and check out. I've got some links down below. If you wanna know more about tech, if you wanna know more about how to build your own home lab, I've got those links down below in the description of this video. Thanks so much for tuning in. We will talk to you next time.